Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to interstitiallungdisease.info. In this episode, I'd like to discuss about pulmonary fibrosis symptoms, or what may someone feel or experience when they are developing scarring of the lungs, because this is what pulmonary fibrosis means. So let's get into this a little bit deeper. Generally, if we had to just simplify it, boil it down to two symptoms, we would talk about breathlessness and cough. So breathlessness and coughing. Short of breath, having a cough. But it's not that simple. There are many nuances. We have to go a little bit deeper. And I hope you'll stay and watch towards the end because I go over a lot of potential causes for this. The reason why there are so many nuances and I cannot just give you a simple answer. You've got these symptoms, you've got pulmonary fibrosis. It's not never that easy. In the case of lung conditions, all the symptoms are very non-specific. So you can imagine if you have breathlessness and cough, that can be caused by a number of conditions affecting the lungs and not only the lungs. So we need to get, go a little bit deeper. And then at the same time, one condition, so for example, if we're talking about pulmonary fibrosis, we're talking about lung scarring, that can present differently from person to person because each of us is slightly different. I may develop different symptoms if I get pulmonary fibrosis compared to you. And this is what makes it very, very complicated. Now, what is pulmonary fibrosis? Let's start with that and hopefully as I build upon this concept, you will find it easier to understand what the symptoms are and what may be causing them. So I talk about pulmonary fibrosis in other episodes as to the causes because there can be very many conditions that lead to scarring of the lungs over 200 according to some authors. So a lot of little conditions that may be leading to pulmonary fibrosis. But basically the gist of it is that the lung tissue becomes harder. So the lungs are harder, become harder to expand because of scar tissue buildup. And the parenchyma or the tissue of the lung becomes distorted. So we have something called architectural distortion. This is a term you may hear on radiological reports. You may see it written on letters. So this just means that the airways, the shape of the lung becomes distorted by the scar tissue that tends to pull airways open or to just create these jagged lines within the lung tissue. So this is what you may hear about sometimes. At the same time, pulmonary fibrosis can be mild or severe. So there is a spectrum. Just because you have scarring within the lungs doesn't mean that it's the only reason why you may be breathless. And whether the scarring gets worse over time, whether it is progressive, is also very, very important. At the same time, people who have pulmonary fibrosis, lung scarring, may also experience flare-ups or exacerbations when the fibrosis gets worse or when they get an added infection within the lungs. So that can increase these symptoms dramatically, but then they tend to go back down as uh, you know, the condition improves a little bit. And then other conditions may be associated with pulmonary fibrosis. So things like heart failure, which may cause you to be breathless and sometimes to wheeze, to cough, to give you respiratory symptoms. So a lot of things can contribute to an overall poor health in someone who has pulmonary fibrosis and there's not just one symptom that explains it all. But let's delve a little bit be deeper into each symptom. So cough and breathlessness. So with cough, it's important to note that it's not always due only to the pulmonary fibrosis. It often is, but there are other causes we need to think about. So sometimes patients may experience a cough because of acid reflux, so gastroesophageal reflux, so basically acid coming up from within the stomach up through the esophagus and we inhale some of that acid or vapors coming out of the stomach and that makes us cough. If we have a lot of reflux, it may irritate our airways and make us cough. Post-nasal drip, this is when we've got little secretions from the back of our nasal passages going down the back of the throat, irritating the throat, making us cough. We may have a chronic cough, a cough that doesn't really go away because of that. Sometimes people who have asthma also have a lot of coughing. So it's not necessarily, like I said, pulmonary fibrosis that's causing everything. And these conditions can be associated with pulmonary fibrosis. So someone who has lung scarring may also have asthma, acid reflux, post-nasal drip. So it's important to think about it holistically. There may be sometimes also certain medications that are prescribed for high blood pressure. So things like ACE inhibitors. So these you may recognize because they end in pril. So enalapril, perindopril, ramipril. These medications can sometimes actually induce a cough in some patients who take them. 
It's not always the case, so please do not stop any medication without your doctor's advice, thinking that that's the reason for the cough. Discuss it with them because they may be needed for another condition. So always, everything that I'm telling you on this channel, please check with your own healthcare providers as they, the information applies in your case. Then, other people may experience a cough after a chest infection, and this is called residual coughing. So if you have a chest infection, you may experience a cough for up to maybe six weeks after that infection. And you may perceive that as some kind, of, some kind of a sign that there is another condition such as pulmonary fibrosis there or the fibrosis is getting worse and may just be the infection resolving itself slowly. And also there may be something called cough hypersensitivity syndrome. So some people just have a lot of coughing and it's very hard to explain. Sometimes they are just sensitized to different things. And so their cough reflex is stronger because the cough itself is not a disease. It's a reflex of the body. And sometimes if, you know, there may be a trigger for that or maybe that your body is a bit more sensitive. So that it's very common. But as you can imagine, coughing is a very common symptom. So in pulmonary fibrosis, we generally talk about a dry cough. This is what patients usually have, although sometimes you may be bring up more sputum, especially if the airways are distorted. So I mentioned before about this architectural distortion. So if the airways are a little bit distorted, they may develop little pockets where uh, secretions can build up and you may experience excess sputum production that builds up and you have to clear your chest in the morning. So that's possible. And coughing is one of these symptoms that can be very hard to manage in the case of pulmonary fibrosis. Generally, it's done with the help of cough suppressant medications. So this is generally morphine based, so opioids, which I know, especially in the United States, for example, they have a, they carry a lot of bad connotations, but actually they can be helpful medication, useful medications. Um, morphine can be given sometimes as an oral liquid that is taken as needed, and it can help with the breathlessness as well, or sometimes as slow release tablets. And of course, treating all the causes that I've mentioned before, so things like acid reflux, post nasal drip, if you have an ENT problem, stomach problem, things like that, may also help control the cough. So it's a holistic approach. We need to think about all these things when we're treating cough. So thinking about possible causes in your case, not putting it all down to the pulmonary fibrosis is quite important. Let's talk now about breathlessness. Breathlessness. This is the second thing. So again, the breathlessness may be caused by the pulmonary fibrosis progressing over time or becoming quite severe, but in very, very mild cases of pulmonary fibrosis, it may not actually be the main cause. So if the scar tissue within the lungs only affects a very small part of the lung, it's probably not enough to cause all the symptoms, all the breathlessness. It depends on the condition as well. So it's not always due to pulmonary fibrosis. It's important to mention this to drive this home. So let I will give you some further potential causes for breathlessness towards the end of the video, but let's slowly move on at the moment. Now, breathlessness as itself, as a symptom, is one of the worst problems that patients with pulmonary fibrosis have because it really affects the quality of life. It limits the activities that you can do. Obviously, if you're breathless, you can't leave your house. You know, you can't deal with things around the house. It can be very, very shocking for many patients, especially those who were quite active before getting this diagnosis of pulmonary fibrosis. So if you were walking for miles, or you were an athlete, or you were playing a lot of sports a few years ago, and now you're barely able to do your house, house chores and activities, it's probably a pretty bad situation. So it can be shocking. The breathlessness can be also very hard to manage, and it can be progressive, especially if the pulmonary fibrosis is a progressive form. There are many cases in which the fibrosis, the scarring within the lungs, is not progressive. But when it does get worse over time, the breathlessness is expected to get worse over time as well. So... It's important just to make a note here about anti-scarring medication or anti-fibrotic medication. These don't, they're not expected to actually improve the breathlessness or the symptoms, but they can slow down the progression. So if you're suffering with a condition like idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis or progressive pulmonary fibrosis due to another cause, so the scarring gets worse over time and you are, your doctor recommends going on anti-scarring medication, anti-fibrotic medication, in the long term, you'll probably be better off on the medication if you can tolerate it because it will reduce the rate at which your condition gets worse. But it's not expected that by going on the medication, the symptoms will improve, but long term, it's probably a better solution. Again, when we talk about breathlessness and flare-ups, so when your condition gets worse, that's when breathlessness can, of course, skyrocket. You can have a lot more breathlessness, but it may recover back to baseline. So it's a very nuanced situation. The breathlessness may not always be the same within the condition of pulmonary fibrosis. So 
at the same time, the breathlessness can also improve sometimes. So you can actually get rid of the symptoms in part or completely if there is a treatable cause for the interstitial lung disease that you're experiencing. So if it's not all scar tissue within the lungs, and for example, there is inflammation or an environmental cause that's driving the inflammation, we remove that or we treat the condition within the rest of the body, like a rheumatological disease that is also affecting the lungs, causing inflammation and making you breathless, it can lead to improvements in breathlessness and maybe cough as well. And also, when we think about pulmonary fibrosis, there may be other symptoms that I have not covered here, but cough and breathlessness are probably the main ones. Important to note though that people can have many other conditions, especially at the age when people do get pulmonary fibrosis, which is usually later in life. So let's go over, over a few more cases situations in which people may develop breathlessness that have nothing to do with pulmonary fibrosis, but I thought I'd add these at the end of the video because it's probably important. So let's talk about heart failure. So this is when your heart is not pumping blood really well. This can happen to a lot of people. It can be generally optimized with medication, but it can cause breathlessness. So this is important to keep in mind. So always have a holistic approach. Talk to your doctor about potentially other causes for your breathlessness. Don't just put it all down to the lung problem, to the lung scarring. There may be heart valve problems. So the valves within the heart, they're not closing well. So that can lead to sometimes impaired circulation and uh, breathlessness. So this is important to note. Atrial fibrillation. So this is when your heart is not pumping in synchrony. So the top part of the, the heart is fibrillating. It's not really squeezing at the same time as it should in a timely manner to help pump the blood efficiently. So that leads again to impaired circulation within the heart and it can cause breathlessness. There may also be nothing to do with the heart, but deconditioning. So people who are a little bit breathless because of pulmonary fibrosis or another reason may end up doing less and less exercise as they do less and less. Their muscles weaken, their respiratory muscles weaken, and at the same time, they become more breathless as they're trying to do more things. It's a vicious circle. Try to break it. Always try to keep active as much as possible. There may be also other chest problems. So moving away from the pulmonary fibrosis, the lung scarring itself, there may be other chest conditions that maybe lead to breathlessness. So for example, if someone gets an acute infection, so if you get an episode of pneumonia, you'll probably be a bit more breathless. So this is something that can happen. Or during the recovery process after a viral infection, you may be more breathless, but it, these situations tend to improve over time. So you may become breathless in those situations. There may be an airways disease. So not related to the lung scarring itself. Some people may have asthma, COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or emphysema. These conditions in themselves can cause breathlessness. So of course, not always related to pulmonary fibrosis. There may be also other lung problems. So when we think about pleural effusion, so fluid around the lungs in the pleural space, so this is the thin membrane that surrounds the lung, there, is, uh, uh, there are two layers, basically in, be in between these layers, which are called the pleural surfaces, you can have a buildup of fluid sometimes due to many, many causes again, and that can make you breathless. Uh, it can be related to heart failure, for example, it can be related to infection, to certain cancers, so th those things can lead to breathlessness. There may be a pneumothorax, so this is when you have a collapsed lung, that can also make you breathless. So, as you can see, there are many things that need to be excluded and thought about when we think about breathlessness in the cases of pulmonary fibrosis. There are also two other things that I'd like to mention. So one is pulmonary hypertension. So this is again a circulatory problem in which the pressure between the um, heart and the lungs and the artery that connects the two is increased. And that leads to impaired circulation of the blood through the lungs. And it does not collect oxygen as efficiently as it should. The circulation of blood through the lung is impaired. So that can make people quite significantly breathless. Sometimes, the, and it's actually quite common in certain types of interstitial lung diseases more than in others. So this is something that I thought I'd mention. So it's important to be screened for this, usually with an ultrasound of the heart. That's the easiest screening test that's done for pulmonary hypertension. There may also be pulmonary embolism. So sometimes people may develop a blood clot or some other clot that goes into the lungs, into the circulation of the lung and blocks off a certain section with a segment within the lungs. If that blood clot is fairly large, it can impair quite a lot of the circulation through the lungs. And it's an, again, one of these situations where people, people may develop breathlessness. Now these blood clots can happen to everyone, but some sometimes it can be more frequent in people who suffer with cancer, with certain autoimmune conditions, people who are immobile. 
for some reason. So, for example, they have had a significant surgery and they have to be immobilized in the bed for a long time. They've had a fracture uh, or maybe they've been on a long haul flight. So they couldn't move and blood clots, uh, blood clot develops within the lower limbs in the veins within the lower limbs within the legs or the pelvis and it travels to the lungs and it can block off uh, part of the pulmonary circulation by lodging within a segment of the lungs so this can happen sometimes generally when people develop pulmonary embolisms or blood clots they develop a sudden worsening of the breathlessness which doesn't seem to be explained very well uh, although sometimes people may uh, see that one calf for example is a bit more swollen and painful so one of the legs seems to be more swollen and painful. If it's an acute event, I would some, it's something I would mention to your doctor because you may require some tests. And generally, when we have to diagnose whether there's a clot within the lungs, it requires specific lung scans. So one of them would be a computed tomography pulmonary angiogram, which is basically a CTPA. It's a specific type of scan in which a dye is injected into the vein of your arm. And, and as the dye circulates through the lungs, uh, imaging of the chest scan of the chest is performed to determine where the clot may be if there is one also um, ventilation perfusion or a vq scan which is a basically it has another name of ventilation perfusion scintigraphy or a nuclear scan of the lungs that can also sometimes pick up a blood clot or suggest there's the presence of a blood clot or sometimes if there is a swollen leg like i mentioned before symptoms that suggest that there's there may be a dvt or a deep vein thrombosis within one of the legs an ultrasound of that limb of that leg may pick up a clot so again this is when uh, you know there's a clot but i thought i'd delve into this a little bit because i think it's really useful to know that these things can happen as complications as in someone who has pulmonary fibrosis so it's not all to do with just fibrosis lungs are scarred you have breathlessness you have cough the symptoms in pulmonary fibrosis can be triggered by so many things and this is what i wanted to to share with you with this video i thought I hope it, you found it helpful. It's been a bit longer than, than usual, but if you have further questions, if you'd like me to clarify any of these bits that I've mentioned, do leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer. Thank you very much for watching and wish you all the best and good health.